Hi folks. So the goal here is to understand what I call the geometric series, one plus x plus x squared plus x cubed plus dot dot dot. So the goal here is to analyze carefully the sequence of partial sums of this series in order to understand its convergence behavior in terms of this variable quantity x. And um, I'm going to make the claim that this is the only geometric series you really ever need. Every other geometric series basically looks like this, so it's important to really understand this one well. So let's start with a very concrete uh, picture here. We've got two squares, unit squares, right next to each other. So the height is one and the width is two. And this square on the left obviously has area one. And if we were to split the square on the right vertically, then the left piece would have area one half. And if we split the remaining piece, the left piece there would be a quarter in area and so on. We're gonna keep splitting this ad infinitum and we will um, obtain this sort of decomposition of the original two squares. And we'll notice that we haven't actually removed anything or added anything in this process. So the area of the whole thing is two. And therefore, if we believe the areas of the rectangle should add up to the whole thing, it appears that we have a simple picture proof of the fact that the series we have here on the left actually has to converge to the number two. So it's a very beautiful concrete result. And we want to sort of generalize and maybe um, verify this result through an analysis of partial sums. So let's uh, remind ourselves that uh, each term in this series is obtained by multiplying the previous term by a half. So the language here is we call this a geometric series with common ratio one half. So let's look at the geometric series. What do we mean by the geometric series? Well, we can look at the term one and then multiply by the variable quantity x over and over again to get another geometric series whose common ratio this time is uh, the variable x. And so by letting x be any real number, we get just about every uh, geometric series you can get, uh, starting with the term one. So uh, we already understand several of these series already. I mean, the case x equals one is rather silly. You've got this uh, clearly divergent series that diverges to infinity. When x equals a half, we recover the example we just looked at. And so we believe that this should converge to two. When x equals zero, you get a rather silly series that obviously converges, this converges to one. And when x equals negative one, you get a series whose terms alternate between one and negative one. And when you calculate the partial sums, the partial sums alternate between values of one and zero. And since the sequence with terms one and zero does not converge, the limiting value of the partial sums fails to converge in this case. So this series actually diverges. So let's try to analyze this series generally. What does the sequence of partial sums look like? Well, quite literally, we're just gonna write them out like this. And uh, we can see the pattern. We realize that the general nth partial sum is just the sum of the powers of x all the way up to the n minus one power. So that's nice, but not too helpful. What we'd really like to do is find a closed form expression for this sum, something we can get our hands on and then perhaps we can analyze the limiting value of this partial sum as n goes to infinity. So we're gonna do that in a kind of sneaky way here. We're gonna take this expression for the partial sum and we're gonna multiply by one minus x. What does this accomplish? Well, when you distribute the one across, you're basically gonna get a copy of all those terms. And then when you distribute the negative x across, something interesting happens, you basically get the same terms, but you've kicked up the power, you've kicked the exponent up by one, and you've introduced a minus sign. So basically you can um, see the terms literally shifted to the right one with a minus sign in front. And then when you add them up, almost all of this cancels, and you just get the surviving terms one and negative x to the n. So this is the result of multiplying the original partial sum expression by one minus x. So this equation um, puts us very close to a nice um, closed form because we just divide both sides by one minus x. 
So here's our partial sum, and here's a nice formula. But of course, this formula doesn't work when x equals 1. This would be a disaster on the right-hand side because we'd be dividing by 0. That's no big loss because um, that case isn't very complicated anyway. So it's OK to lose that case. So let's go back to our original analysis. We have our partial sum expression, which now we can replace with this nice general formula. So sigma n equals 1 minus x to the n over 1 minus x. Now, what do we have? We have an explicit formula for the partial sum sequence. Now, it's early in your studies of infinite series, and so you won't be able to appreciate this, but this is a rather rare occurrence when you're dealing with infinite series. It would be so convenient if you could always come up with nice explicit formulas for partial sums, but it's rare, so we should appreciate this. And, um, and we know that to understand the convergence of the original series, the geometric series, we need to analyze the convergence of this sequence of partial sums. That is, by definition, what it means to understand the convergence of the series. And in order to understand the convergence of that sequence, it all boils down to this term x to the n. This is where all the activity is happening. So let's just concentrate on it for the moment. What are the convergence properties of x to the n? Well, if x is greater than 1, your studies of exponential functions should tell you that the limiting value of x to the n is infinity. This sequence is going to march off to infinity. It's going to diverge to infinity. So that's one case. Um, we're going to be complete about this. When x equals 1, then the limiting value is 1 because, of course, you're just going to get back the constant sequence 1, 1, 1, 1, 1. Now, if x is greater than or equal to 0 and less than 1, then Again, your experience with exponential functions should tell you that the limiting value here is 0. x to the n will march up to 0 as n goes to infinity. Now, if x is between negative 1 and 0, um, we're going to get convergence to 0 again. It'll be slightly more interesting because now the terms alternate in sign, but they wobble less and less around um, the x-axis and they converge to 0. And finally, if x is less than or equal to negative 1, then the sequence diverges. The limit doesn't exist, and we can't even really say much about the manner of divergence explicitly. I mean, when x equals negative 1, you're just going to get this alternating sequence jumping back and forth between 1 and negative 1. And then if x is actually less than negative 1, the magnitude increases without bound and the sign alternates. So it really goes off the rail here and diverges badly because it starts wobbling further and further away from the x-axis as you move along. So um, very bad, poorly behaved divergence there. So in summary, here are all the cases. Um, the limit as n goes to infinity of x to the n could equal any of these. Um, by the way, these two cases uh, we can exclude for the moment. We don't need those cases because we already understand the um, series very well when x equals 1 and negative 1. So let's just ditch those for the moment. And our summary will look like this. And we will set it aside and return to our analysis of the partial sums of the original geometric series. We have our nice explicit formula. Then we have a law of limits, which puts us inside of that expression there. And now we see that this is the heart of the matter. What does this uh, rectangular region, uh, how does this behave as n goes to infinity? And we've got the answer right next to it. If the absolute value of x is less than 1, then that rectangular region converges to 0. That rectangular term, so to speak, converges to 0. And we're just going to get 1 over 1 minus x. However, if the absolute value of x is greater than 1, then you're going to get divergence. And um, so here it is. This is your result. The limiting value of the partial sums is going to be this. Um, and of course, that's telling us by definition what the series does. So the original geometric series converges to the value 1 over 1 minus x if the absolute value of x, the absolute value of the common ratio, is less than 1. If the absolute value of the common ratio is greater than 1, then we get divergence. And let's not forget these two cases that we set aside because we already understood them. We get divergence in the case of x equals 1 and negative 1. So to include that in the picture here, we can just change this greater than sign into a greater than or equal sign. And now we've captured the divergence for the cases where absolute value of x is actually equal to 1 on the nose. 
So this is the summary of our behavior of the quote unquote geometric series. And by the way, we can rewrite this in a slightly more refined form if we want to express the divergence explicitly. So what do I mean by that? If x is greater than or equal to one, then the series actually diverges to infinity. All the terms are positive and you're going to get divergence to infinity. If the absolute value of x is less than one, then you get convergence to the value one over one minus x. And if x is less than or equal to negative one, the best we're going to be able to say is this diverges. So let's test drive this. Let's go back to our case x equals a half. Clearly, the absolute value of x is less than one in this case, so we should be able to apply our formula. We set uh, x equal to one half in our formula. One over one minus a half is one over a half, which is two, and it works. Good news. So the geometric um, argument we had at the beginning matches our algebraic argument that we developed in the middle. Um, let's look at the case x equals 9 tenths. If you substitute 9 tenths for x, you're going to get this geometric series. Um, this is a convergent case because x is between negative 1 and 1. So we'll plug in 9 tenths into our formula for the sum. Multiply top and bottom by 10, simplify, and we get 10 for the value. Now, notice that when x equals 1, the geometric series diverges to infinity. So it shouldn't be surprising that if x is relatively close to 1, then the value of the series will be relatively large. And in fact, if you looked at the limiting value of 1 over 1 minus x as x approaches 1 from the left, that limit is infinite. So what does this mean? It means that by choosing x close enough to 1, we may actually create a geometric series that converges to as large a value as we wish. So you can always rig it so you can get arbitrarily large values from a uh, convergent geometric sum. Let's look at the case x equals negative 2 thirds. You're going to get this geometric series. And once again, this is a convergent case because the absolute value of x is between um, is less than 1. And you carefully substitute x, uh, you know, negative 2 thirds for x in your formula, but you have to be careful because of the sign. Simplify this and you get 3 fifths. All right, some comments. When x is negative, you just have to take a little bit of extra care there with a the formula. You don't want to drop that sign. That would be bad. And let's just look at this simple argument. If a series, if, a, if you have a convergent geometric series, well then necessarily x is greater than negative one. That's not a sufficient condition, but certainly x does have to be greater than negative one. Now, if that's true, then negative x is less than one, one minus x is less than two, add one to both sides, and then reciprocate. One over one minus x has to be greater than a half. What does that mean? It means that anytime you have a convergent geometric series, you have to converge to a number larger than a half. Now I'm talking about the geometric series, one plus x plus x squared. Of course, there are other types of geometric series that don't have one as their initial term, and you can get them to converge to any number. But um, for this sort of pure geometric sum, one half is the smallest sum you can get, which is somewhat interesting. So there you go. On to more general geometric sums in the next video.